Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bradley United Methodist Church. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Reverend Steve McPeak. I'm the pastor here. And if uh, you would just sign in the pew pads that are in your pews, that would give us a record of your being here with us. So we will know that you're here and, and uh, can count you as uh, one of the saints that was here today. Uh, also, those of you who are watching online, if you're watching for the first time, I'd like to say welcome to you as, as well. Uh, so glad that you chose to worship with Bradley United Methodist Church. Uh, also, there's a uh, link in the comments section there for you to sign in uh, the electronic pew pad as well. And when you do that, if you could just put down how many people are watching with you, uh, that would be great so that we can know the numbers that are uh, watching online. Um, also... Um, there's going to be a training after the service today for child protection policy. Uh, those of you, anybody that works with the children have to do this. Um, it's a way to protect our children and a way to protect you uh, as uh, someone that works with the children. And so we will do that training after the service in the uh, parlor just across the hall over here. Um, so if you do, please just uh, come over there. It shouldn't take more than an hour. Uh, so... Uh, probably not even that, but we just want to make sure that we go over our policy with you and, and um, uh, anything that you may ha any questions that you may have as well. Because um, we just want to protect our kids, and we think you want your kids protected as well. So uh, please, uh, if you work with kids, or even if you're planning to work with kids, go ahead and attend. Um, that way you'll already know what's going on. Um, also, um, I think... That's all, well, that's all there is. <laughs> I think that's it. So let us prepare to worship this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Everyone looked after the needs of the other. They gathered together in worship, prayer, and fellowship, sharing a meal together. There was not a needy person among them. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. We are chosen, called, and sent to share our testimony about the resurrected Jesus Christ. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, we too have great power to testify in word and deed to the grace and love of God in this world today. Oh. 
children come forward for the, uh, the children's message. Common? Okay. <laughs> so you're not going to be up here by yourself. <laughs> you want to come up here now, Lucille? <coughs> With your brother? No? <laughs> You made it. I like your dress. That's pretty. And your shoes. I like your shoes. Those are sparkly. <laughs> well, what's the most, what is this? Do you know what this is? A baseball. It, it's a softball. I didn't have a baseball, but yeah. It's a softball. You feel it? Yeah. So, so what's the most important position in softball or baseball? Pitcher. Pitcher. Catcher. Infield. Outfield. Are you sure? Who Who else is out there on the field that that doesn't play for either team? Huh? Umpire. Umpire. Yeah. Ding ding ding. You got it. Good answer. Well, if the players, uh, the, the umpire is um, the one that stands behind the plate and he calls the balls and the strikes and, and calls the outs, doesn't he? Yeah. So he's really important. He's an important person of the game. And so people have to trust the umpire, don't they? <coughs> that when he calls a ball and a strike, it's, it's really a ball and a strike because he's up close, right? So it's easy to see the ball when it's up close, right? Yep, you feel it. See, it's easy to see it, right? It's not soft. It's, no, it's not soft. It's, it's not a soft softball. Did you, did you see it? No? Okay. Um, so anyway, this is um, hard to see when you're out in the outfield, I'll tell you, to see if it's really a ball or a strike. But the umpire is right there. He's right behind the plate. He can see really good because he's really close to all the action. And so if the players doubt that the umpire, uh, if they doubt the umpire, then the game falls apart, doesn't it? One of the disciples, Thomas, didn't trust the other disciples when they told him that Jesus had been raised from the dead. He wanted to see Jesus for himself, just like a baseball player or a softball player who wants to get close and see the pitches. They want to actually see it for themselves, right? Show me the review, the replay. Let me see that for myself. And we have a lot of replays now, don't we? Because people want to see it for themselves. And so Jesus appeared to Thomas and showed him his hands and said, Do not doubt, but believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. And so even though we weren't up close to all the action when Jesus was crucified and died and was raised from the dead, we still believe what others say, right? That's part of our faith. That's part of being, uh, uh, trusting the word of God, trusting in the faith of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus wants us to trust him in the same way that baseball players or softball players trust the umpire. Even though they can't get up close and see all the pitches, they still can believe what the umpire says, right? And so we need to just trust in Jesus. And trust what he says. Let's pray. 
Eternal God, we just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us so that we might live with you. And so, Lord, I just pray that we would trust in your word, your son, Jesus Christ, and, and move forward in trust and faith with him throughout our whole life. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thanks for coming up. You got you got started. <laughs> All right. stand as you are able and comfortable for the scripture reading. Our lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, starting with verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven then. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, and Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <laughs>
Thank you, choir, for that inspirational anthem. Appreciate it. Um, it's great to be here in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning with the sun shining finally. Cold's not as cold as it's been. And we continue to just celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, during this Easter season. You know, the joy of Easter is just so great. The victory is just so decisive and the implication is so awesome that a single Sunday cannot fully embrace all that the resurrection has to offer us. That's why Easter is not just one Sunday, but it's a seven Sundays. It's a, a week of weeks of Sundays where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the grave. It's so awesome. You know, the, the empty tomb is a, a monument to Jesus' victory. His tomb is empty. Death is swallowed up in victory. Every skeptic, every agnostic, every would-be follower, every seeker of faith must trust and confront the plain fact that the tomb was empty. When the women went to the tomb, it was empty. And so you can watch the replay of that all you want and <laughs> check it out. Slow, slow it down, slow motion, like they do today. And you'll see that the tomb is empty. The grave clothes are folded up. They're put on the, the place where they laid Jesus' body. But he's not there. Take away the resurrection of the body and everything else is meaningless. Still, an empty tomb isn't the clincher. You know, it can be ignored. It can be explained away. And the disciples didn't believe the news at first either. They thought it was nonsense. Until they saw the risen Jesus Christ. And Thomas didn't believe it either. Show me a risen Jesus with nail marks in his hands and a spear mark in his side and let me touch him. And then I'll believe. You know, and what about us who do not see, who cannot see? And yet we are called to believe that Jesus Christ is risen and in whom we too will rise. We have Jesus' words. Words of blessing from the one who was crucified and now lives. We have Jesus' words a blessing from the one who was crucified and now lives. Words from him who conquered death by dying. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's you and me that Jesus is talking about. We are those that were not there. We did not see it happen, but yet we still believe. We have been, the faith has been passed down from generation to generation. And we have come to faith in, in believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he has risen from the grave. He is not dead. Amen? Amen. That's why we're here, gathered together on this Sunday morning to celebrate, to worship, to testify to our faith. Jesus gives us another beatitude. He says, blessed are you who have not seen me and yet that, uh, believe that I died and rose. Truly we are blessed. We are blessed by his words. We are blessed by his wounds. Words that bring peace and forgiveness and faith and, and the wounds are the tokens of his sacrifice. The means by which he makes himself known to us. His words and his wounds are his Easter gifts to his disciples and to us here today. And they are our joy this morning, the second of seven Sundays in Easter. Jesus is alive. He is risen from the grave. You know, the disciples... <laughs> They were locked up in a room on that first Easter Sunday. They were locked up, terrified. 
It was near sunset late in the afternoon and the rumors of the resurrection were all around them. They were filled with fear rather than joy. Fear of the Judeans, fear of their own death, fear of not knowing what to do next. If they had done this to Jesus, they might do this to them as well. We could be next. Let's just hang out. Play it safe for a little bit. And so, into that prison house of fear, Jesus comes. He doesn't knock on the locked doors. He doesn't wait for someone to open the doors and invite him in. No, Jesus simply appears in their midst. He's been there all along. But now he makes his presence known. His first words deliver peace. He says, peace be with you. And this isn't an idle peace that he's talking about. This is a real concrete peace spoken by the prince of peace. He shows them his wounds and the nail marks in his side. Or the nail marks in his hands and the scar of the spears in his side. And as Isaiah 35, uh, 53, 5 reads, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Amen. I'm healed. <laughs> I'm forgiven. I'm made whole. I'm claiming that. You guys, I believe it. And I hope you do too. His is a peace that would, the world cannot give. Peace with God. Peace with one another. You know, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And uh, it means more than the absence of war and fighting. It, it means everything in its place. It means harmony. In harmony and, and whole. It's like God is, when you say shalom, you mean there's harmony in the room. There's peace between you two. There's, there's harmony. There's no conflict. And whatever is broken is made whole. As Jesus says in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Wherever Jesus is, with his wounds and his words, there is peace aplenty. Sin is atoned for. Death is conquered. Life comes overflowing. And peace, it's real peace. Jesus, the crucified and risen one, is our peace. His wounds the marks are the marks of his death and the death he endured in order to save you and me. Rejoice in those wounds. Recall the water and the blood that flowed from his sword pierced side. They are the sacraments of peace and life and salvation poured out for you and for me. They are for us there in the fount of the holy baptism, in the chalice of his supper. As real as the Jesus in the upper room on that first Easter evening. Jesus is present with us. And he makes his presence known. I hope that you sense Jesus' presence with us. Especially when we take and break the bread and drink the juice. During the Lord's Supper. You know, real words, real wounds... My body given for you, my blood shed for you. From a real and resurrected Jesus. Hmm. And real peace. The fear then gives way to joy in verse 20. The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? Spend all that time with Jesus and then... He's gone. You see him die, and now he's there with you. What joy. The Easter news is true. The Lord is risen. 
the, how great their joy must have been to see his wounds, to hear his words, to be filled with his peace. That's what Easter is all about. <laughs> then again, Jesus says, peace be with you. The first time was peace for themselves to quiet their fear. To turn their sorrow into gladness. This time it is peace for others. To move their feet outside of that locked room. And to go out into the world. Jesus tells them, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Did you know that you are sent? Not just the apostles. That first Easter. <laughs> they were just the first. You are sent. You are sent. And so Jesus tells him, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Jesus was the apostle of the Father, sent by his Father. To receive Jesus was to receive the Father who sent him. And to reject Jesus was to reject the Father. Now Jesus sends his apostles to speak his peace in his stead and by his command. He breathes his breath on them and speaks his words into them. His words are spirit and deliver what they say. Receive the Holy Spirit. And they receive the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, the disciples couldn't do what Jesus was sending them to do. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't do what Jesus is sending us into the world to do. It's too difficult. There's too many things that attack us. Too many obstacles to overcome. And so Jesus breathes on them the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is their ordination. They're sending with authority. With his breath and his words, Jesus authorizes them to do what God alone can do. Forgive and not forgive sin. So who are they? Mere men. Sinners at best. Well, don't look at who they are. Look at the one who sends them. Look at the one who breathed upon them and sent them out. Who gives him his word and spirit. Jesus sends them with his own authority. The authority which the Father had sent him. The word apostle means one who is sent with the authority of another. And Jesus binds his mouth to their mouth, his words to their words, his breath to their breath, and his spirit to their spirit. Their forgiveness was his forgiveness. And what about us here today? The apostles who were in the upper room that day now rest in Jesus. Did the forgiveness that they were given to speak, did it die with them? Or do we continue today to speak words of forgiveness, of healing, of comfort and peace? Just as those first disciples or first apostles did in that first century. Did Jesus' breath and words continue only with that first generation of apostles? You know, we can't hear their forgiveness any more than we can see Jesus' wounds. What do these words of Jesus mean for us here today? For you. For me. For us here today, it means that Easter is not just one day a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> Nor is it one day a year when we celebrate an historic event in Jerusalem. No. Easter continues. And the gifts of Jesus' death and resurrection are distributed whenever and wherever people are being baptized into Jesus' death. Sins are forgiven in the stand, in the steed, and by the command of Christ. 
and the baptized are fed with the body and blood of Christ. In short, wherever and whenever the words and the wounds of Jesus are, there are the gifts of Easter. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is alive. He's not dead. He is present. He is not absent. And in the power of his resurrection, he is present with us in the fullness of his divinity and his humanity. Locked doors could not keep him out. Nothing can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Try locking your doors and see if Jesus don't get to you anyway. <laughs> uh, try it. Go hide in your house. Lock the door. See what happens. It's not going to stop Jesus. Nothing can stop him. He is present among us as surely and as fully as he was with the disciples in that locked upper room on that very first Easter evening. He is here with us to free us from our fears. To speak his peace into our hearts. To forgive our sins. To turn our sorrow into gladness. To bless us. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed are you. You have not seen him. But you believe in him. You have not seen him, but you have been born and bathed in his baptism. You have heard his forgiveness, and you will taste his supper. What a promise. Many of you believe that promise this morning? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I hope you believe it, because there's power in that. There's power in proclaiming that. Accepting that gives you power to speak up, to go out, and to speak about Jesus Christ. His words, his wounds, his ministry, the gifts of Easter come from Christ to his church and to you, who is the church. We are the church. This building is just a building. We are the church. Amen? We are the church. And his gifts and his words, his, his wounds are given to us. And he sends us out into the world to proclaim the resurrection of the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus the Christ. Don't be afraid. Let Jesus' peace be upon you as it fell upon those first disciples in that first evening of that first Easter day. And be blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning as well. And I have some prayer concerns that I'd like to share with you that we need to lift up and one is we want to continue to pray for Mike and his family. Um, we want to pray for Kevin Davis. I just heard this morning that Kevin Davis, a, a D and Keith Davis's son, um, had a heart attack and um, is in the hospital and should be getting out today. And also Nancy Faith, Joe's wife, uh, please keep her in your prayers. Joe had to leave this morning. He got a call from her that she was having chest pain and was calling an ambulance. So uh, please keep uh, Nancy in your, your prayers as well, and Joe, in your prayers. Um, are there any others that you would like to lift up this morning that we need to be praying for? We also have a list uh, on the back of here, on the back of your bulletin, if you'd like to see the whole list. There's prayer concerns and celebrations on the back of here. Um, any other prayer concerns that we need to add? To it. Yes? Family of Shirley John. Shirley John, the family? Okay. Yes? Um, my sister, Nancy Lawrence. 
Nancy Lawrence. Okay. Any others? Okay, if not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal and gracious God, we just give you thanks and praise for the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, whom we believe in. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day where we come together and celebrate Easter, the resurrection of life. Lord, it's a time of year where life begins to break through the soil and reaches towards the sun where new life cracks open through the egg of a bird and the chirps sing praises to your name. And so, Lord, today we come together as your church and we come to sing praises to your name, to lift you up in honor and glory as we worship you and your son, Jesus Christ, whom you gave so that we might live a new life with you. And so, Lord, as we come today, we just give you thanks and praise for your forgiveness and for your love and for your mercy. But, Lord, there's also people who have come, some of us today, who are hurting, who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Those that are grieving the loss of a home, because of the storms, because of the earthquakes, grieving the loss of a business, the loss of a relationship. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would comfort them during this time of grief in their life. May your peace fall upon them, even in the midst of the pain that they go through. And, Lord, we pray that you would also Bless the children of this world. Protect them. Watch over them. As we prepare to have a training to, to make sure that our children are safe and cared for. Lord, may you also be with those that are sick and infirmed. Those that are fighting cancer those that are recovering from a surgery or fall or an accident. May your healing hand touch them and heal them right now, oh God. Lord, we bring these petitions before you this morning knowing that you hear our, our pleas, our prayers. And we thank you for answering our prayers. And so, Lord, we also pray that you would take away the hatred within men and women's hearts that would cause them to harm one another. We pray, Lord, that you would change people's hearts so they would not want to shoot and kill somebody. That they would want to instead talk to understand one another, to help one another, encourage one another, instead of harm one another. And so, Lord, we just give you thanks and praise again for hearing our prayers. Amen. We'll now continue to worship through the giving of God's tithe and our offering. <clears throat> as the ushers prepare to come forward at this time. And also I'd like to invite those of you who are watching online, if you also would like to participate in this part of the service, there's a link that you can click on in the comments uh, section there, and it will take you to the giving page of our website where you too can, if you wish, so wish to support the ministries of Bradley United Methodist Church, um, give your tithe and offering there as well. And so as the ushers come forward, let us prepare to take up the offering.
stand? receive the gifts we offer, and let all our service, inspired by the breath of life, give you glory and praise. In the name of the word of life, amen. amen. You may be seated. God is with you. And I'm also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Holy One, our God. It is good and beautiful to give God our praises. God, in love, you create us. In love, you claim us. In love, you promise to be with us always, and you are. When we wander, you follow. When we are sad, you set us free. You judge the forces of oppression and lead us toward justice, toward a new Jerusalem, in which everyone is beloved. As a sign of that hope, you invite us to your table. At this table, all are welcome, and all are beloved. Where we are all young and old, rich and poor, male and female, guilty and innocent, whole and broken, without distinction or judgment. Therefore, with all creation, we do praise you with love and delight. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you are blessed are all who come in your name. And blessed is Jesus, your Christ, who loved us as you love us. In love he taught and healed. He gathered the outcasts. He loved the unloving. In love he established a new realm. He built a new city. In love, even in death, he gave up his spirit. So we might love as he did at the table and so many other times, Jesus did again on the seashore. He took the bread. He blessed it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, we feast. Whoops, that's yours. As long as we break this bread and share in this cup, we remember Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. Therefore, remembering these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Dying, Christ destroys our death. Rising, Christ restores our life. Christ shall come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Pour out your Spirit on us, that we may feast on your love, and it will become part of us, so that your love is the love with which we love all people. In the name of Jesus. 
on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. In the same way, after the supper was over, he took the, took the cup. He gave thanks. He blessed it and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my body poured out for you and for many, for in a new covenant, which is the forgiveness of sin. And now, with the confidence of the beloved of God, let us pray together. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. Bread in which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Here at Bradley United Methodist Church, we have open communion, which means everybody is invited to come and participate and receive the elements, the bread and, and juice, if you would like to participate, if you love Christ and want to come to the table and feast, you are invited to come. And so we're going to ask that um, the ushers come forward, but we're going to start with the front of the church, have you come up down the center aisle and back to your seats through these other two aisles here and just have everybody come down the center aisle and exit and go back to your seats through the outer aisles here. And so will the ushers come forward at this time, those that are going to help serve communion? set and it's ready for those of you who are ready to come forward at this time you're invited to come
If there's anyone that could not come forward or still would like to participate, just hold your hand up and we'll come to you and serve you where you are. Let us all pray together. <coughs> Gracious God, we thank you for this mystery in which you have given yourself to us. As you have loved us, so may we love one another and all your children. Send us into the world unafraid of all that is new and changing. Steadfast in love and faithfulness, in the love of God, we pray. Amen. Those of you who are able to, let us stand and sing our closing hymn, Lord of the Dance.
Okay. Stand up. Put your arms out. Give yourself room to put your arms out. Okay. Repeat after me. Beloveds in Christ. Beloveds in Christ. Know there is peace with God. Know there is peace with God. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Let it be so. Let it be so. All right, thank you. May God's unwavering grace be for each of us a very present help, now and always. Amen.